Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today I'll be showing you how to easily get a little bit more performant. Well, it depends on what CPU and cooling system you're using. In this case, it's very much a little bit more performance, um, but with other CPUs and not the stock cooler, you can get far more performance. Uh, on Ryzen 3000 with uh, Asus uh, motherboards. Now, if you have something like a 3900X or a 3950X, I would strongly advise that you don't try to do this on a B450 motherboard, because if you do, there's a pretty good chance the cool, like the motherboard's power delivery won't be able to keep up under heavy workloads, and your system will just randomly shut down on you out of nowhere. Um, unless you account for the fact that a lot of B450 motherboards just can't handle high power consumption. Anyway, um, today we're going to be doing this with a 3700X, which is why we can get away with using the stock cooler. So the stock cooler for the 3700X is actually capable of handling, you know, the, the precision boost overdrive settings that we're going to be applying. Um, I'm also going to be using this memory kit right here. So this is uh, Patriot's Viper Steel 38, uh, 3866CL18 memory. Um, this is not ideal for a Ryzen build, um, but we're using it anyway because I don't have a convenient 3600... Uh, well, I do have a 3600 megahertz memory kit, but it, like I don't want to keep using the same memory kit for every single one of these demonstrations. So yeah, we're we're on a, a 3866CL18. We can still make this work, um, and I'll show you how in the BIOS shortly. Um, anyway, so that's the memory kit, CPU 3700X. Uh, my 3700X is pretty bad. Like, it was already bad when I first got it. It's got, only gotten worse since, because I've been less than gentle with it in terms of uh, uh, manual overclocks that I've been running on it. So... Uh, yeah, there are definitely CPUs out there that'll see bigger gains than this one. Um, and then also the, the the cooler is just not ideal for this. Like, it, it'll work. Like, there's no reason not to do this because the CPU um, won't, like, damage itself by, by doing what we're going to do. It's just that because the cooler is so... Uh, is relatively weak... Um, the amount of performance gain we can get from, from adjusting the precision boost overdrive limits is just very small. Um, and then for the motherboard, I'm using an Asus X570i Strix. So that's the ITX Strix motherboard from Asus ROG. Um, this is basically the best X570 motherboard, uh, ITX X570 motherboard. Forgot that part. Like, <laughs> it's not the best X570 motherboard in general. There's stronger options for, like, if you want memory over, like... Well, it really in any direction, like whatever you want, there's stronger options than this. But as far as just straight up ITX boards go, this is definitely one of the best um, for the entire AM4 platform, in fact. Now, um, yeah, um, everything in the test bench is, uh, you know, well, I have everything in the test bench thanks to the AHOC patrons. So huge thanks to you know, everybody, and also all the people who buy, like, AHOC merch and that kind of thing, so huge thanks to, to you guys for making videos like this one possible. There's links to the Patreon and the Teespring store down in the description below if you'd like to check those out. With that out of the way, let's actually start the PBO and XMP uh, settings up here. So here we are in the BIOS of the motherboard now. Uh, if you're on, um, I, I think this is mostly like an ROG versus mainstream ASUS distinction. So if you're on a mainstream ASUS motherboard, your BIOS will probably look like this, except in a different color scheme when you first log in. So you'll see this screen, not this screen. Um, and it'll be blue, not red. Um, so the way you get out of here is you just press F7. Um, also, if you hit F, oh, F1 doesn't work in here. So that's great. So yeah, you hit F7. If you ever want to find, like, useful shortcuts for any BIOS are just on the F1 key. So, yeah, you hit F7, it'll put you into advanced mode. You're going to go over to AI Tweaker, and you're going to go to AI Overclock Tuner, and you're going to select DOCP. For whatever reason, Asus, because they're Asus, can't call XMP XMP, because apparently that's just too normal for them. Um, but anyway, what that does is it loads up your XMP profile for your memory. Since we're using a 3866CL18 memory kit, it loads up 3866CL18. This is not ideal for Ryzen 3rd gen if you want to not spend a bunch of time like stress testing your memory overclocks. Um, because the Ryzen CPUs, well, the, the thing is, if you don't want to fiddle with a bunch of settings, this is not an ideal memory configuration. Ideally, you go for a, if you want the easiest experience, you want to go with like a 3600 megahertz uh, rated memory kit or lower. Um, you don't want to go for a 3866. Now, we can still work with this because this kit actually contains, uh, has two XMP profiles. One of them is 3733. 
um, which actually isn't that huge a difference because you can actually just straight up buy memory kits that are like uh, 3860, uh, that are 3600, 18, 22, 22. Um, except they're much cheaper than this 3866 kit because at 3600, CL18 is far less impressive. But uh, yeah, um, so to not just like, like 172121 is not the tightest timings ever either for 3600 me megahertz, but the thing with Ryzen is it's the the memory clock speed and the infinity fabric clock takes priority. So that's why we're just going to go with the 3733172121. Um, we're not actually going to get CL17 uh, once we get into Windows because uh, the Ryzen memory controller automatically goes into gear down mode. All you really need to know about that is it just forces even cast latencies and some other sub timings are forced to be even, but you like, we're not here to deal with that because that's complicated and this is supposed to be the easy way. So then we're just going to set our memory frequency down to 3600 megahertz. So on paper, you could go out and buy like a, you know, like 4000 or 4133 or whatever frequency rated memory kit and then just force it down to 3600 megahertz. And by doing this, you basically put the memory uh, back in sync with the Infinity Fabric because the Infinity Fabric, all, when left on auto, will not go above 1800 megahertz. And in general, it's like if you try to go past 1800 megahertz, there's a good chance that your CPU is not necessarily going to be stable. And then you have to start doing a lot of stress testing and just you probably don't want to deal with that. Um, so yeah, if you want to be like extra safe and don't mind giving up a little bit of performance, 3466 megahertz rated memory kits are like, I like I have heard of like a few very rare cases of CPUs not doing 1800 megahertz, but 1800 megahertz is so commonly achievable that that's where AMD defaults, like that's where AMD's auto configuration will work up to. So um, yeah, 3600 megahertz should generally be the uh, sort of like easy, like 3600 megahertz should work on like 99% of CPUs. Um, if you are really unlucky and you get a 1% CPU that it won't do it, then you prop then you might have to drop down to like 35, um, you know, you might have to drop it down to 3533 or 3466, but um, that is very, very unlikely. Um, so basically, even like even if you just in, apply any XMP profile, you should still pr run a stress test over overnight, let's say. But unlike with manual overclocks, I wouldn't say it's absolutely critical to immediately run a stress test because with manual overclocking, a lot of the time you can set up settings that are uh, very likely to quickly corrupt your operating system, uh, <laughs> as I've blown up quite a few Windows installs recently. Um, while messing with memory overclocks. So that's why, you know, you just want to stay within like a 3600 megahertz uh, XMP. Um, and that'll like be the, gen for 99% you know, percent of CPUs, that'll be the comfortable limit where you don't have to really do anything. So anyway, that's the, that's the memory settings. Um, next, we're going to go to the Precision Boost Overdrive menu over here. Um, there, you're just going to set this to manual and you're going to set the following limits of 300, 230, and 230. These are the same limits I use for my 3950X. The reason why we can use the same limits for both CPUs is because these are the opposite, like these limits just work on both both of my CPUs. Um, I don't have a 3900X and I don't have a 36, I, uh, yeah, 3900X or a 3600 or a 3600X. I would assume these limits work on those CPUs as well because when I was testing my 3950X with only 12 cores enabled, these limits still work just fine. Um, and basically what these settings do is they tell the CPU that it can use up to 300 watts of power, which this is a 3700X. It is literally impossible for a 3700X within the Precision Boost system to pull 300 watts. There's just no way to get it to pull that much power. It doesn't have enough transistors to do that. Um, the other two limits are basically how much current the CPU can pull. Um, so we're telling it that it can pull up to three, 230 amps, similar to the 300 watt power limit. The CPU is not physically capable of pulling 230 amps. It's a 3700X. Now, the 3950X, on the other hand, can pull a very large amount of current. And that is why if you have a 3950X, these settings on, say, a B450 motherboard, these settings are probably going to make your motherboard overheat and shut down in multi-core workloads. So I would not recommend doing this on a B450 motherboard because they're just not built for the amount of power that a 3950X or even a 3900X is capable of pulling 
when you disable the power limiters for it. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our precision boost overdrive scaler to 4x, or actually we can just leave it at 2x. Um, basically you might wanna, tr like it, if you feel like it, you can try messing around with like 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x. Though in my experience, um, on most motherboards, the scaler doesn't do anything. It doesn't change performance, it doesn't change voltages, it doesn't change power consumption. I don't know why, it, like, <laughs> I, I honestly sometimes question why AMD has all of these settings that don't do anything. But I guess they really like making unnecessary toggles in their BIOSes because, yeah, the, the other thing that also doesn't do anything. So here we're just gonna go with 2x actually because I've done a couple, well, I've done tests of 4X, 2X, 1X, 3X, like it, for this CPU on this motherboard doesn't make a difference. On one other motherboard on an older BIOS version, I was see, seeing slight differences, but th that's the other thing is like on different BIOS versions, uh, the, the boost system behavior changes with them. So it's just like, it's not even consistent, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, um, the next setting that absolutely doesn't do anything is the max CPU boost clock override. Um, in theory, the idea behind this setting is that if you set it all the way up to 200 megahertz, in theory, you would get 200 megahertz more boost. In practice, it does absolutely nothing. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just leave it on auto and just kind of forget that it exists because honestly, if AMD removed it, it wouldn't make a difference as far as I can tell. Now, at the same time, I have heard that maybe on like 30, uh, well, I've heard from some people that on some CPUs this does work, but on none of my CPUs that, like on my CPUs it doesn't do anything. So I can't tell you that it does anything because I've never seen it do anything. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna leave it on auto. Then the platform thermal throttle limit, we're not gonna adjust that. We're just gonna leave that on auto, which uses the AMD uh, thermal limit. And that's how we can get away with running the stock cooler. Because if you did adjust the thermal limit, then instead of just sort of the CPU running up to the maximum safe temperature, well, you could tell it that it can run up to say 110 degrees, which is not safe, or well, significantly less safe than say the stock thermal limit of 95 degrees, which the CPU won't even reach. Like it'll start throttling wait well before that. So it'll top out around 90 for, for this setup right here. But uh, the thing is, yeah, like you could extend, like raise the thermal throttle limit, but that's a bad idea if you value the lifespan of your CPU. Um, so I would also not adjust that either. Um, and yeah, that's all we're going to do for the, the boost settings um, because, uh, yeah, that's all, all you need to do with them, really. Um, and these values, in my experience, are just the most consistent ones. Like, I've heard of other value combinations that people have used, but a lot of them from my, like for this 3700X, these consistently deliver the best performance. So um, yeah, and the same for my 3950X actually, it's just like these are the most consistent for getting maximum performance across a variety of workloads. Some of them very, very, uh, very, very heavy. So anyway, um, that's all we're gonna do in the BIOS, you know, just set the, enable the XMP and set these precision boost overdrive limits. Um, and if you're on a B450 motherboard with a 12 core or 16 core, I just wouldn't do the PBO part. Like just, just don't do that because <laughs> those motherboards just aren't built for this much power consumption. So that's it um, for the BIOS settings. So now we're just gonna F10 for save and, uh, save and reset. Now we're gonna go into Windows and r run a couple benchmarks just to uh, show that, you know, this works. Now, if you have a better cooling system, then this will obviously have a bigger performance uplift. If you have a CPU with, that has better silicon, um, you'll also see a better performance uplift than I will. Um, this chip, like, is just awful as far as I'm concerned. And it is like a release, like, uh, it, it seems to me at least that it seems like AMD's silicon quality has been improving over time. And this is a release, like, yeah, basically release week CPU. So it's one of the very, very early samples and yeah, it's just awful. So anyway, here's the baseline results. Um, so I ran all of these benchmarks at, with the system at stock. So we can see that normally the CPU on this motherboard, because th that's the other thing is that um, 
well, there are some motherboards that at stock um, don't seem to follow AMD's stock settings. And, uh, well, that's kind of concerning because it's like it's supposed to be stock, guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, so on this motherboard, the CPU puts uh, spits out 4771 uh, Cinebench R20. Sometimes it'll even do 4780, but most of the time it hovers around like 4770. Um, for Intel burn test, it spits out about 95 gigaflops. Um, for this, uh, so HWBot X265, that is a video encoding benchmark, um, and that runs just under 15 FPS, and then Geekbench 3, um, you know, single core is 5,124 points and 38,738 points for multi-core. It's worth noting that Geekbench 3 has synthetic memory scores, so, uh, and especially for the single core benchmark, the, the memory score can significantly if inflate the overall single core score, so that's just something to keep in mind is like, you'll see this score increase quite a bit, but a lot of that is just like a memory performance improvement. It's not necessarily like a major improvement in terms of the CPU's ability to do calculations. Because um, the Precision Boost Overdrive system, basically uh, it increases the um, performance of the CPU when previously the uh, CPU was limited by something. So a 3700X on stock settings will be running benchmarks while I explain that. So a 3700X on stock settings has a power limit. So the PPT limit that I changed in the BIOS to 300 watts, that is normally 84 watts, which makes it really weird that AMD calls the 3700X a 65 watt TDP CPU when the literal power limit in the BIOS is 84. But anyway, so um, normally the CPU has an 84 watt power limit, which means if the CPU starts pull it, like if there's a workload that makes the CPU pull 84 watts, it'll start lowering the free, uh, it'll lower the frequency to stay within that 84 watt power consumption. Um, if you have a single core workload, which is just because you only have one core doing any work, it's not going to pull as much power. Um, you're not going to see like changing the power limit from 300 watts to, to uh, I mean, from 84 watts to 300 watts doesn't do anything in a workload that is single core and pulls roughly 20 watts, right? So that's the, that's the thing is like precision boost overdrive does not improve single core performance because your single core performance is not power limited in the first place. Um, and the same is true all the way up to like four thread, six thread workloads, because this is a 16 thread CPU. So if you, you know, you have to keep in mind that there's the simultaneous multi-threading, which basically means that for low core count workloads, this does absolutely nothing. And the main place you'll see uh, performance gains is heavy multi-threaded workloads. Um, but unfortunately we're on the, the stock air cooler here, so... Well, actually, this is one of the better scores I've seen it put out on this, uh, with, with this cooling system. Um, with a better cooling system, I've seen the CPU go all the way up into, like, the 4950 range, but at the same time, the CPU is just kind of terrible in the sense that it needs way too much voltage to do even 4.2 gigahertz, and using the Precision Boost system doesn't really change the, the fact that the chip just needs way too much voltage for reasonable frequencies, um, in multi, like, in all core workloads, so... That's kind of the thing. So we, we, we just got 4883 for Cinebench. So that's a nice little uplift right there. And I'm just going to calculate quickly what that is compared to stock. But it, it's honestly like, it's not impressive. Like it's a little bit. Um, Cinebench is not exactly sensitive to memory settings. Um, not enough to cause a hundred point change. So anyway, that that is a 2.4%. Well, it's like a 2.35% uh, performance uplift. So it's like 2.3, you know, 2 point, so yeah, 2.3% performance uplift with a better CPU or a better cooling system. You might see, you know, larger performance uplifts than this, but this chip is just terrible and we are on the stock cooler. So yeah, the silicon lottery still applies even if you use AMD's automatic boost system. Um, it is worth noting that using PBO doesn't, like, you don't lose any idle power consumption. It's just, like, the only workloads where your power consumption goes up is multi-core workloads where previously you weren't hitting the power limit. So that, that's kind of the thing is just, like, in lo like basically, unlike, say, normal overclocking, this isn't, well, if you statically overclock rise in your power consumption will for low core, low thread count workloads will actually generally go down because you're going to lose single core speed. But, uh... Um, 
like, well, basically, there's no downside it's in terms of your, like, idle power efficiency or low thread count power efficiency compared to stock by doing this. The only place where this increases the power consumption is, you know, uh, workloads that already were hitting the power limit before, which would be things like 8 plus thread workloads that are very, very heavy, like 3D rendering here. Um, anyway, the next thing we're going to run is Intel Burn Test. We are not going to run 10 iterations of that. Uh, Intel Burn Test is uh, a, well, the version of Intel Burn Test I use has AVX acceleration in it. It's very hot, it's very memory heavy, um, and it's also rather long, so we're only going to do three loops of it. And the other downside with the, the stock air cooler is not only does, you know, it limit how much of a performance gain you get from the precision boost system, because basically... Um, once the CPU is no longer limited by power consumption, the main thing that's going to be reducing its frequency is the temperature that it's running at and the voltages that it's applying. Um, so there's a upper limit to how much voltage the CPU is going to take at any given temperature, and there's a defined frequency for every level of voltage that the CPU is willing to run at. So that means if the CPU gets very hot and it reduces the voltage to stay cooler, um, well, you're going to lose frequency in the process because the voltage comes down, the frequency comes down with it. Um, so, yeah, and the, the other thing is the cooler does get loud. So, uh, like, technically, you can do this on the stock air cooler. Um, and there's definitely, like, there's no harm in doing this to your CPU because it still has all the same thermal limits. The only thing that's changed is, like, now it's not going to power limit. Um, so... But the downside is um, it's loud and the performance gains are kind of small. So you might want to consider getting like a better air cooler. For a 3700X, I would not consider uh, like an AIO, I'd say, is unnecessarily expensive. You can get, you know, $50 to $70 air coolers, which have absolutely like have more than enough cooling performance for, for a 3700X. And they're probably going to be quieter than an AIO just because most air coolers go with very low RPM fans, except for like, stop, like, well, depends on how much you're spending on your air cooler, but once you start getting into the better ones, they tend to top out at around 1500 RPM, whereas most AIOs aren't that afraid of having fans that top out at over 2000. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so here we're getting 98 point, um, the, you can actually see the performance drop off as the heat builds up, so the first First run loop there is 98.6 gigaflops, the second one is 98.4, the third one is 98.3. If we ran out a few more loops, it would come down maybe a little bit more. But you, you can see how basically, yeah, as, as the chip gets hotter, the performance comes down. Um, but still, we're seeing a performance uplift of, uh, what is that? Well, we'll go with the 98.26, right? Um, compared to previously the 94.9. Um, which, uh, that's about a 3.5% uh, performance uplift, which is like, okay, that's not very much, but at the same time, if you're enabling your XMP profile and you're already in the BIOS, you may as well change the PEO limits, because there's really no harm in doing that, as far as I'm concerned. You know, and, and you do just punch in three, well, yeah, you punch in three numbers. It's also worth noting that the, the PBO limits of 300, 238, 230 I use, if you're on the uh, if you're basically on the latest BIOS for your motherboard and you punch in values higher than that, you're actually going to lose performance. Why? I have no idea. But AMD's boost system, it, like, well, general fun <laughs> a general feature of most AMD anything um, that's supposed to be smart is that it's dumb, and if you give it a too big number, it breaks. So if you set more, th if you set the two TDC and EDC above 230, you'll start losing performance. Um, so that's why I set the limits to 300, 230, 230, and not like 300, 300, 300, or just set them to the highest possible input that you can uh, set into those fields, which I do believe for this motherboard is going to be like 999 or something. Um, so yeah, that, that just doesn't work. Um, that, that would actually lose your performance, so don't do that. Um, what was the next workload? H265. So, IBT um, actually does benefit quite a bit from memory performance. Um, so that's why it sees a bigger performance uplift than Cinebench. It also runs hotter than Cinebench. So it bounces off, like at stock settings, IBT actually bounces off of the power limit more than Cinebench does. Um, anyway, so now we're going to run 
um, X265 here. This is just a 4K video encode. It's not too long. And previously in this we'd be getting 14.957 FPS. This is... Well, this actually depends, like, how hot this runs kind of depends on how many cores your CPU has. Um, just because of the limitations of the X265 encoder. Um, or H265 encoder. So, yeah. But on the, on the 3700X, it actually maxes out basically the entire chip. And we're not going to open up any monitoring because that affects the scores. And for the previous runs, I didn't have any monitoring open for the scores. So, um... We will do a test of like, can I get the CPU to overheat with Prime 95, 128 KFFT size, which is pretty much the hottest, actually, it's not pretty much, it is just as hot as just running straight small FFTs, except it uses more of the cache. Um, I don't think it's enough of a, F like the FFT size is still so small that I don't think it actually gets into the main memory yet, which is most of the reason why it runs so hot. Um, but, um... Uh, yeah, so, like, these these workloads right now, these are not worst-case scenario. Like, IBT is pretty heavy, but worst-case scenario is very much like Prime 95, 128K FFT size. There are some 3D rendering applications that get close to Prime 95 levels of power consumption. Um, Cinebench is not one of them. Um, yeah, Cinebench is relatively light. Even the, the latest Revision 20 with uh, AVX acceleration is actually not much heavier in terms of power consumption than Revision, revision 15. Um, the main difference is that it's longer. Um, so it's more like it, if you have a weak cooling system, R20 complains about it more than R15 because it runs longer and so it, it, it's going to heat like it's going to hit the thermal uh, thermal capacity of your cooling system sooner um or while the benchmark is running whereas with r15 you could sometimes finish it before anything really got very uh, before anything even got hot anyway so the score we got is 15.7 fps whereas previously it was putting out 14.957 um and that's about a five percent uplift which uh you know, X H two the this benchmark pretty CPU heavy, also very memory dependent. So it sees the largest performance uplift so far. Now we're just going to run Geekbench three. And so this is a th this has some single core tests in it, it has some multi core tests in it. But the thing is, it obviously has those synthetic memory tests. So it's going to spit out a single core score that looks really good, but most of that score is the, the memory test being way better because instead of running stock, which is, uh, for most memory kits, if you if you have a memory kit that has an XMP profile and you don't enable the XMP profile, it will probably default to 2133 CL15. Um, so if you, if you assemble your system and never go into the BIOS to turn on XMP, your memory is going to run at 2133. Um... Which basically means that the, the stock memory performance in Geekbench 3 is terrible. And actually, that's also part of why X265 run, runs so badly is just, um, at stock is, is that, well, it's run at 2133 CL15 because that's the default memory, the default speed for a lot of memory kits out there. Um, you can get memory kits that will default to up to 3200 megahertz at CL22. Um, it's just that you're going to be, like, they're kind of... Th those are actually kind of awkward to find, um, those kinds of memory kits. And yeah, so here we have our our uh, Geekbench 3 score. If we compare it to the previous score, what you'll notice, and we'll just zoom in on this. Um, so we get our score here. So it looks like we have a pretty large uplift in the single core score, right? 5,451 compared to 5,124. But we see like a thousand four hundred points uplift in the memory performance, whereas floating point performance basically hasn't changed at all, right? That's still five thousand three hundred and eighteen versus five thousand three hundred and four. And single core score, I mean, integer performance has gone from five thousand three hundred and eighty two to five thousand four hundred and eighty eight. So while this is saying that we have a performance uplift of like three hundred points, Looking at something like the actual integer performance, it's more like a hundred. Um, so, and most of like, and most of that can still be attributed to the memory because the boost system, a PBO, does not make single-threaded workloads run faster. That's just not something it does. 
Um, and that that's like, I've tested that extensively. That's just not a thing. I've never seen it improve single core. Uh, now, multi-core score has seen a decent uplift. So we actually see about, you know, 600 points um, multi-core floating point workloads, about a thousand, okay, now more like 800 points for uh, for uh, multi-core integer workloads, and then also about a 2,000 point uplift for, um, you know, the memory workload in multi-core. And just wanted to go over to, uh, and so the overall performance uplift there is like 39,647 divided by the previous score of 38,738. Um, that's not what I want. Yeah, 738. Um, so that's about a 2.3% performance uplift, which, uh, it's, well, we're on the stock cooler. The CPU really isn't that great. Like, I'm sure there are chips out there which might pick up closer to well, the other thing is, is like the 3700X, well, it depends on the CPU heavily. With the uh, 3950X, you might see up to, say, a 10% performance uplift, best case scenario. Um, and if you get a really lucky 3700X, you might see something similar, but I would not count on it. I would expect, if you have a good cooling system, I would expect anywhere, depending on the workload, anywhere between, and multi-core workloads, anywhere between sort of 2% and 5% uh, performance uplift. The thing is, and I know that doesn't sound very impressive, but it's like, well, you're already, you're going into the BIOS and enabling XMP, just stop by the precision boost menu on the way, right? Like it, it really, it doesn't take any time. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna see that, uh, well, I'm just gonna prove that the CPU isn't gonna well, it's kind of hard to prove because really we could just run Prime95 for like hours and hours and hours. But the thing is, at some point it would start warming up the room because um, <laughs> this room's actually pretty cold most of the time. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to show that, you know, we, we can't just uh, over like the CPU is not just going to destroy itself right now, um, even on the stock cooler. So... Yeah, and we can see Prime 95, you know, peaks at like 140 watts, and the power consumption is actually going to come down as the temperature goes up because the CPU is going to throttle itself back more and more as the the temperature goes up. And immediately we go up to 1.25 volts, and it's actually going to drop down from there. Um, if we had a better cooling system, um, it's not dropping right now, it's still warming up. By the time it hits 90 degrees, I expect it to be around 1.23. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so that, that's the thing. Even with the stock cooler, um, you can do the PBO adjustments and the CPU will still um, control itself and not, you know, just thermal, like, overheat. Whereas with static overclocks, um, you can very easily get the CPU over 100 degrees. Um, I have not yet had a Ryzen, like, thermal shutdown on me, which is... Uh... <laughs> Which is kind of concerning, but at the same time, I'm not really interested in testing if the th if they're like the thermal shutdown functionality works properly, because that's just kind of like I like I don't want to find out that it shuts down at like 120 or something. Um, like th this the CPU is already in bad enough condition as is. I don't need to make it worse. Um, well, I don't need to make it worse anytime soon. I still have like tests planned for it, so. Yeah, and you can see that we're, we're just kind of, you know, going up to 90. The voltage, like, now it's doing, like, 1.23. Eventually, it should drop down to 1.25. Uh, um, so, yeah, you know, like, even on the stock cooler, if you don't mind the... Because it will create more noise. That's, I think, the biggest downside. So, yeah, the CPU won't, like, destroy itself. It will, however, make your computer kind of loud, especially if you do heavy multi-core workloads. So... I guess the biggest argument to not do PBO on the sock cooler is the noise. Um, but from a safety perspective, it's fine because all of the usual thermal limits are still there. It's just that you told the CPU, hey, if you're not overheating, you can use more power. And, well, um, you know, like, well, it's not really overheating. It's still at 90 degrees and the stock thermal limit is at 95. But it is running hot um, and the CPU is, you know, doing... Like it, it's not gonna go above ninety because it won't uh, it won't decide to do that on its own. So yeah, and now the the power consumption is coming down a bit. So that's the thing. If we had a better cooling system, instead of you know dropping down to thirty nine point five in Prime ninety five, we could be 
uh, you know, if I had a cooling system that had this 15 degrees cooler, um, we would probably be a little over 4 gigahertz instead of a little under 4 gigahertz. The thing is, that still doesn't make that much of a performance difference, because going from 39.5 to, say, uh, like, it, let's say it did 41, uh, so 4.1 gigahertz, instead of just 3.95 gigahertz. The thing about that, like, frequency uplift is that is a, like, 3.8% uh, frequency uplift, which is just, like, that's that at best, in workloads, that's going to make a 3.8 performance difference. Right, 3.8 percent performance difference. So it's kind of the thing. Um, I, but at the same time, uh, and also uh, this chip doesn't do 4.1 for Prime 95, even when it isn't cooling constrained. It's just not good enough for that. So um, yeah, but um, that's it. That, that's really all there is to to doing a precision boost overdrive overclock on Asus motherboards. Um, I would assume that like. You know, as I said, when uh, with, with the limits like 300, 230, 230 for my 3700X, for my 3950X, those limits work the best. Um, they give the most consistent performance uplifts. There are some limit, like I have seen one combination of settings that would score better in like Cinebench and it would not score better anywhere else. And the improvement in Cinebench was like one percentage point. So I was just like, well that's not really worth discussing. So, um, whereas like everything else lost, sig like, well, actually the, the performance loss was also about 1% everywhere in, in the other workloads that, you know, were negatively affected by it. So at that point, it's just like, well, just use the 230. Um, and also that those settings actually don't benefit this 3700X at all for some reason, which, which doesn't really make sense. But um, yeah, so... For, for the ending, I'm just going to go back into the BIOS. Um, so, yeah, you can PBO on the, on the stock air cooler for, for Ryzen CPUs. Um, well, uh, the 3700X at least. Like, the, the thing is, if you did this on, like, I don't know what the how well the stock cooler for, like, a 3600 would handle these settings. Um, but I would imagine, like, worst case scenario, you're just not going to see any performance uplift, right? Like, that, that's the thing, is just, like, if the cooler can't keep up, the CPU will just not speed up. That, that's, that's all that really happens. Um, so, yeah, whereas if the stock cooler can keep up, well, you get a bunch of free perform. well, not really a bunch, but you get a little bit more, uh, performance for free. So, yeah. These limits, um, you can try playing with the scaler. I've never seen it do anything um, on the latest BIOS version, which for this motherboard, the BIOS version we're on is 1405, which using the mouse in the BIOS is just a terrible... Like, you should not use the mouse in the BIOS. I don't know why motherboard vendors vendors even bother including mouse functionality in BIOS. It's just like, if anything, it's obnoxious, but... Um, yeah, so this is on the 1405 BIOS, which is the latest BIOS for this motherboard, All right? And just go into PBO, set those limits, enable your XMP, make sure that you're at 3600 megahertz if you don't want to mess around with memory stability testing, and you're gold, right? Um, assuming you don't have a, if you're on a better cooling system, you're going to see better, uh, better, better performance improvements than I've seen here. But uh, I did want to demonstrate that, yeah, even if you have the stock cooler, you can still do this. It's just kind of going to not necessarily have that much of an impact on your workloads. So, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon where you can support me directly. There's a link to that down in the description below. Which, uh, speaking of that, thanks to the patrons for, you know, funding all of the hardware that I used for making this video. Um, and then also there's the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, and thank you to those people as well because, well, that also helps with funding uh, funding the channel. So, yeah, there, there's a link to that down in the description as, uh, description as well. So, um, if you'd like to check that out, that would be awesome. And that's it for the video. So, yeah, goodbye. I'm going to hit the stop button now. I'm so good at outros, yeah! <laughs>